VK5YYY here in the workshop. Hi, I'm Roger. And it's been a couple of months now since we did a teardown on the Commutec filter for DVB-T at 445.5. And since then, I've really been thinking a lot about how I can translate that to 23 centimetres. A nice man in Sydney, John, VK280U, came up with a filter design that he found on the internet and he built a filter. He showed that on a video on YouTube, and since then I built a couple of filters like that. And that sort of got the ball rolling. So here's the, uh, the first filter that I built using the design that John showed me. It's a design from uh, the Balkans, I think it is. And uh, let's see what it says down here. Uh, S53MV so um, the idea is to have uh, three pillars it's a comb line construction and we've got these uh, probes that uh, couple to that first pillar there and uh, the first time I built it, it seemed to work pretty good so that was this little fella here there's the three poles bolted there and the three tuning screws right so the pillars that I used originally were uh, 8 mil aluminium and I used one of these little thread nut certs to uh, go in the end of the um, bit of pipe. So I compressed the nut cert into uh, the end there. You can just see it there. Let's see if we can see it any better. Yeah, so it's pressed in there with the vise, and it seemed to be a fairly good interference fit. And then just to make sure it was flush on the end, I used the uh, belt sander to just make it nice and straight on the end. And you can see it's knurled over. That actually was an element off of a uh, Hills antenna. So that's formed around by a forming machine. Now, in later designs, I tried bigger poles. And again, it's that same concept. There's a nut cert in there. And those nut certs are about 10 mil outside diameter. Those ones didn't press in quite so well, so I had to sort of squash them using the nut cert tool. And they fitted up in there quite nicely, and uh, that worked pretty good too. Right, so. Here's the next one I built, and you can see, if I compare the two, you can see how the, uh, the newer one, the poles are further spaced. So according to the spiel here, to get an 8 MHz bandwidth filter, the spacings, uh, let's see, tube length, inner size, outer side, tube. Yeah, the spacings had to be about 60. So this one here is 60, and this one here is 50 between the poles. So 50 yields a wider bandwidth, and 60 yields a smaller bandwidth. So that's quite a big jump of bandwidth in um, a very uh, small changing of distance. Right, so at any rate, uh, I remember drawing up my uh, designs here. I don't know if you remember seeing this, but this is the design of the uh, Comtech filter, the 44. 5.5 um, DVB-T filter and that was a seven pole filter so we've got uh, five poles 
that were on the middle of the filter and then the uh, coupling probe and then there was this funny probe on the outside that was a notch well you can't actually see it there but there was a probe there and I've drawn the distances but not the actual probe so this probe on the end was a notch in that particular filter so I thought well if I had some notches that could be good too so I mucked around and stuffed around and I guessed a little bit but I came up with this little table of uh, spacings I thought would be appropriate based on what I'd read from the original design and the uh, design from the Comutech field, uh, Comtech filter so after a lot of deliberation and fine tuning I built one let's go and have a look here it is here so it's the same structure only it's for 23 centimeters this is 60 by 40 pipe the same as those smaller ones we just saw and in this design we've got one two three four five the same as the Comtech design and then we've got our notches on the end notch one and notch two now you can probably see there originally I had the notch probe there and uh, it seemed a little bit aggressive and I regret putting it there now so I just thought well let's back it off a little bit now the original filter was designed so you could have adjacent channels whereas this filter here well I think it could be useful as a diplexer so I tried different uh, poles I started off with 12 mil poles and I've settled on uh, 10 mil poles I also put some of these adjustments in between the probes to try and adjust the uh, coupling between the stages a little bit and there was a lot of mucking around and stuffing around fluffing around before I uh, I've settled on this now getting the bandwidth just right was a bit of a nightmare but I think I might have done it every time you change the uh, diameter of the pole you can imagine if you increase the diameter of the pole the coupling becomes closer so therefore the bandwidth increases and also uh, when you make the pole smaller the coupling or the distance between them is greater therefore the bandwidth decreases so it's a funny old world here and uh, the poles here in the middle are closer together and then these poles on the outside here are a little bit further apart or did I get that wrong no these ones are closer and these ones are further apart sorry so having juggled a lot of these things I finally uh, tested it and look what I've got I'm pretty impressed by that and uh, you can see in the center of the screen we've got uh, 100 and, uh, 1287 and uh, the uh, bandwidth is not bad so let's span out a little bit let's go to 50 so you can see the bandwidth the sh it just starts to roll off beyond the 3.5 so so plus and minus 3.5 is the width of our um, 7 megahertz symbol uh, signal and uh, yeah I've just bought my uh, notches in there to try and steepen up the sides there a little bit so it's come up quite nice it's not super flat on the top I haven't tuned it to death what have we got there minus 2.6 on the uh, loss so that's pretty good really for such a narrow band filter and it's homemade and nothing in there is particularly silver plated so I'm pretty happy with that now if we go full span well not much else happening there is there so I think that's a pretty good result and it was after a bit of head scratching but uh, I've spent uh, 
two or three nights on it and, and a little bit of time this afternoon. And let's face it, the contesting has been rubbish. <laughs> so I've made a couple of contacts up there, but uh, we seem to be getting a lot of noise, but not much, uh, not much CQ. So at any rate, uh, this is my plan B on contest day. So I hope you do better in the contest than I did. This has been VK5YYY. Why, why, why? With another exciting action-packed video. Good on you, I'll see you.